The following organizations have provided the funding for this Into the Outdoors television series. take it from here. So what are glaciers and how are they formed? Basically, they're made up of ice and snow. Lots of ice and snow. Here's how it works. If climate conditions are just right, snow keeps piling up in layers that get thicker and thicker. This can happen over a really long time across a large area. The key to making glaciers is to have a lot more snow accumulate than the amount that melts and evaporates. Bottom line is you have to have a yearly net gain of snow. Eventually, the layers get so thick and heavy, their weight compresses the lower layers into ice. With enough layers, weight, and time, it makes glacial ice. Ta-da, you have a glacier. Hold on, that's all pretty neat and stuff, but there's one curious thing that makes glaciers different from a big pile of ice, right? Oh yeah, and it's that one thing that also makes them shape the land. They move. This is the really cool part. If the ice becomes thick enough, over 150 feet thick, the ice at the bottom gets so compressed it can begin to flow like a river of ice or taffy. That's when you have a glacier, which can be up to a mile thick. And what does it take for something to flow? Gravity. Here, let me show you an example. Let's say that milkshake is our glacier. Some mountain ranges get so much more snow than what can melt, they form alpine glaciers that flow down the mountain valleys. Like that. Sometimes they call them valley glaciers. That one looks more like a vanilla valley glacier. <laughs> the other type of glacier is the biggie, called a continental glacier. That's the huge kind. In fact, they're so huge, they cover an entire continent. There used to be a lot more continental glaciers way in the past. Today, Greenland and Antarctica are the two giant remaining continental glaciers. Continental glaciers still flow, but mostly they spread out from the regions where the glacier is making the most ice. Okay, we know how glaciers form and what makes them move. Let's discover next what happens to all that land when all that ice moves. I think this is the switch. Now our glacier begins to move. The weight of the ice, maybe a mile thick, crushes and reshapes the landscape as it creeps along. But unlike our fake glacier, real ones flow like a river of ice or taffy in irregular lobes. Plus, they don't always flow at the same rate. Sometimes they stall or even retreat. Combine all that, with torrents of meltwater pouring off the front, 
and you have a complex mix of forces that can form some pretty cool glacial features. Glacial scientists who study glaciers can figure out how glacial features were formed. This study is called glacial geomorphology. Heck, sometimes great chunks of ice get trapped under the glacier in the soils. When the glacier retreats and the ice melts, it can form a lake called a kettle lake. See how round that lake is? I'm pretty sure that's a kettle lake. Imagine the big chunk of ice that formed that. Here in Wisconsin, we had many glaciers that moved across the state and retreated back. All this glacial activity started about two and a half million years ago and ended about 12,000 years ago. During that time, we had four major periods of glacial activity that shaped and reshaped our landscape. And when the ice sheets finally retreated, they left behind some really interesting features. But the best place to explore them while learning about their mysteries is right down there. It's the Ice Age Trail, and that's where we're headed next. To get a list of neat glacial features you can find while hiking along the Ice Age Trail, hey, just log on to IntoTheOutdoors.org. Put on your hiking boots. Next, we're tracking down the first series of Ice Age mysteries along the trail, and you won't believe what we'll find. Don't go away. There's more Into the Outdoors.